So let's begin then. What does God require for the education of His children? The Lord's educational requirements. Let's turn to Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. What does God require? Let's look at this. It's some fascinating verses here. We'll look in the Old Testament and we'll look in the New Testament. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 through 7. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. So Deuteronomy, you'll recall the word Deuteronomy means second law. Second law. And after the 40 years of wandering, Moses is giving the people the law again. And he's repeating a lot of the things he's already said in the earlier, in the earlier portions of the law. But here he's talking about how we are to train children, what God is expecting his people to do to train the children. Now let's look at some of this, uh, these specifics that God is giving us here. Number one, these words which I command you, God's first requirement that of education is that it centers and is built on His Word. Now that does not mean that everything that we learn must be from the Bible. You know, when we go to math class, we have to open up the Bible and see if the Bible is a math textbook. It isn't that. But what it means is that everything that we learn needs to be consistent with this biblical worldview, with what God has laid down in Scripture. And if you study the Bible and if you step back and think about it for a moment, the Bible gives us the big picture to understand everything. The Bible gives us the big picture of science. It gives us the big picture of geology. We have a global flood. It gives us the big picture of, of mankind, anthropology, man. It tells us the history of man. It gives us a, a great deal of information about how we are to establish laws and government. So we have all kinds of things in the Bible that that we can build on when we're looking out and learning things. In addition to that, you really can't talk about so many of the subjects that we study in school without the Bible. Uh, you can't talk about them accurately. You can't be fair in your explanation of history without talking about the influence of the Bible. You can't be fair in your discussion of economics without the Bible. You can't be fair in your discussion of uh, cosmology, the study of the stars without the Bible. Uh, you can't uh, talk about world history without the Bible. You can't talk about American history without the Bible. You can't talk about our uh, legal system without the Bible. There's so much, the Bible has had so much influence on every type of subject that we have that if you strip it out, and that is what is happening, then you are giving a skewed and an inaccurate view of the subject. So God is saying, look, when you're teaching your children, no matter what you're teaching them, you need to go back and reflect on my word and make sure that what you're teaching is consistent with my word, consistent with the impact of my word and the truths that I give in my word. So it must center on his word. And these words which I command you, we are to teach them diligently to our children. Do you see that? Now, I didn't write that. Who is supposed to teach? You are supposed to teach, parents. You are supposed to teach these to your children. You are supposed to be in charge, in control, and driving that education. But the word here that he uses is diligently. Diligently. And it's a fascinating word in Hebrew because if you look at it, it means to sharpen. To sharpen the mind. That we are ultimately responsible as parents to sharpen our children's mind like, like a pencil. Like a pencil, we did some carpentry work recently, and we've got these big fat carpentry pencils, and you have to; those things will get they'll get dull, and so you have to take a knife, uh, and uh, and really you have to just carve away at it to sharpen it. It takes a minute to sharpen those. And the Bible is saying, look, you're not supposed to just tell your kids that I'm God. You're not just supposed to tell them about that I've got a word, the Bible, and take them to Sunday school and think that's it. You're to sharpen that mind. You're to be working on the, the training of those children in my word. You see, there's one thing that, I, that I've, I've, I've noticed over the years, especially in American education, pe the way people think about education in the United States. We look at education as being only an intellectual pursuit of information. So education is just information. You just, if you're smart, you just got more information. And we judge people based on that. How much information, how many degrees they have, how they did on a test, how well they can memorize. But the Bible never, never says it's going to judge us. God never says He's going to judge us by how many facts we know. He never says that. He never says He's going to judge your children by how many facts they know. And God is not saying that we should go around and be uneducated. 
uneducated. But what he's saying is he is holding us responsible for his word and knowing and applying his word. And you can be short on the facts of head knowledge, but if you're deep and rich within scripture, you'll live a wise and uh, profitable uh, and rich life. So God is not holding you parents accountable. I've never been concerned that my children went to a big college. I've never been concerned that they went to Clemson or U USC or UNC. Never been concerned with that at all. The primary, the first thing that I've been concerned about is their father, is their moral education. That they are good, godly, wise, Christ-fearing people. And that's what you need to be thinking about too because this is what God says in His Word. He says, I want you to sharpen their mind and then he says, continually apply it. He says, you're going to talk with your children when you sit down, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. What does that mean? He means that his, the education of the children in the things of God, in truth, things that are harmonious with what his word says, is to go on all day long. It's a continual thing. Now, that doesn't mean that we're sitting them in a classroom and beating the Bible over their head. Every, every hour of every day. That's not what he means. He just means as, as you're going along, fathers, as you're going along, mothers, you're explaining Scripture. You're explaining the principles of the Bible. You're applying them to your child, and you're making sure that they are growing in their knowledge of the Word. So these are, so these are some of God's requirements. Center on His Word, sharpen the mind, and continually apply that Word in their lives. We can also look over in Ephesians chapter 6 and see uh, a, a, a very similar <clears throat> teaching by the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 6, 4. He says, And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. This is a, a very similar, although different words, a similar uh, type of instruction that Moses gave in Deuteronomy 6. Let's look at some of these words. Notice here it says that we're not to provoke our children. First of all, see the word fathers there? I forgot to highlight that. You see fathers? Fathers, you are responsible for the training of your children. If you send them to public schools and they are lost to the world, you are responsible for that, not your wife. You are responsible to bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. We're going to look at what those words mean. But fathers, the first thing that Paul says that you're not to do to your children is provoke them exasperate or frustrate. And I've seen this so often. I've seen it from mothers and from fathers. They frustrate their children. Uh, their ch the child will ask a question and the parent will respond in a sarcastic way. Or the child, the child will ask why and the parent will say, just because I told you so. Uh, some kind of a, of a response like that. Uh, frustrating the children. I'm telling you, if you're frustrating your children, when they hit 18, they're gone. They're gone. You cannot frustrate them. You have to respect them. You have to answer them. And let me give you a let me give you one principle. If you will apply this, you'll cut out 80% of the frustration of your children. When you decide something, when you lay down a rule, or you make a change in your home, or anything related to that. Explain the why to your children. Tell them why. Explain your thinking. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't just come down on them. We're doing this now. We're doing this now. Well, Dad, why? Because I told you so. Explain it. Th explain your thinking. Uh, sometime recently I had a, a, uh, something that I needed to talk to one of my children about, and I knew that what I was going to tell this child, they weren't going to like it. That wasn't going to be something they, that pleased them. So when I told them, I said, hold on, now listen to why I'm, let me tell you why I'm going to ask you to do this. And I laid out the reasons. I said, this is why. I'm not just telling you arbitrarily to be mean or uh, to, to make you mad or just to use my, you know, be able to control you. I'm, I'm asking you to do this because of this and this and this. Do you understand? Do you see where I'm coming from? You see, and that keeps them from getting frustrated. So try that, parents, mothers and fathers. Explain yourself. Explain the whys. And in explaining the whys, you will be teaching them uh, the ways of God also if your decisions are based on the Bible. Well, let's look at a couple of these other words. Bring them up in the training the Strong's Concordance says this is the whole training and education of children 
which relates to the cultivation of minds and morals. Remember, I was just telling you that we look at education in our country as just about head knowledge. But God, when He looks at education, He's looking at the whole thing. He's looking at the mind and the morals. He's looking at the, the head knowledge and the character of the child. And this is something that's truly, truly missing. In fact, we're going the completely the opposite way in public education. And we'll see that the next time we talk. But God expects the education of the children, fathers, to include both their minds, both what they learn uh, in terms of subject matter, <clears throat> and their morals. He expects the education to do both and address both of those the way that he expects it in his word. And then the word admonition is uh, similar to the word diligently in the Old Testament that we just looked at. It comes from two words meaning to set the mind. Remember before it said sharpen the mind. <clears throat> now he's saying set the mind, set the mind. And at the end of this discussion today, I'm going to talk to you about your children. If you were to visualize your children and their minds and morals, as being like freshly poured concrete. And we want to refer back to this, set the mind. You've heard of setting concrete, letting it set. That is uh, a very important element we want to talk about as we move ahead here. 